Hello, my name is Ashling, Ashling Richmond, and I'm a somatic therapist, yoga teacher, and also a PhD student in psychology and leadership. So I'll be with you for the next 15 minutes or so, and what I'd really like to offer you is, first of all, a little information on the nervous system, and then some practice where you get to check it out for yourself. So before we begin, I just invite you to um, prepare your space for the practice that will follow uh, later in the session. Maybe make sure mobile phones are off, you're not going to be disturbed. And also, see if you might need cushions or a blanket to hand so you can really make yourself as comfortable as possible for the guided practice. So why focus on the nervous system? Well, the nervous system underlies our emotional responses, our ability to regulate fear and stress, and also can affect our relationships, how we interact with one another. So you can think of our nervous system as almost like the foundations or roots of our being that everything else can build on from there, as long as we're in a state of regulation and balance. But of course, life's not like that, and we can have situations that we face that can really stretch our nervous system into imbalance. So our nervous system is there to help us sustain life. We have two different complementary parts, the sympathetic, which helps us to activate and engage and move and do. And then we have the parasympathetic, which is more calming, it's to rest and digest. So nature has given us these to both help us get things done in life and also to rest when we need to as well. So, so ideally there's a dance between the two, sympathetic, parasympathetic, but when we're under stress, when there's trauma, when there's fear, our nervous system can get stuck in either hyper arousal or hypo. So I have a little diagram here to share with you to explain this a little bit more. So you've probably heard of the fight, flight, freeze response. And these are really nervous system happenings. So remember we talked about our sympathetic nervous system and the parasympathetic. So these are the basics of this main part of the nervous system we're going to look at today. So when we get overwhelmed, when we get stressed, when there's pain, when there's distress, the sympathetic nervous system can kick in as fight. This might show up as irritability, anger, aggression, finding that people are just annoying us and we're, we're reacting to them. Yeah? So that's when our nervous system is in a fight mode. We might be in flight. This can show up as anxiety, as fear, as panic. Avoiding chronic worry. What if the brain can recycle and recycle situations that aren't real right now, but that feel very real, feel looming. So that's our flight response. Then we can also go into what's called the freeze response, where we can feel stuck, in collapse, immobilized, where we can space out, dissociate, can feel shame, depression. And the last response when our nervous system is out of balance is fawn. We might people please, avoid conflict find it hard to ask for our needs and 
really go into the other's needs more than their own, and it can be really hard to say no and set boundaries. Yeah. So that's just a simple look at the nervous system. And what I'd love to explore now with you is how can we recognize when our nervous system is out of balance? How can we regulate that? And how can we then bring resilience? So recognize, regulate, and building resilience. Yeah, that trio. So how might you recognize that you're in a sympathetic fight flight mode? Your heart might be racing. You might find yourself tense a lot of the time, bracing. You might find yourself irritable, angry, as we talked about in the diagram earlier. But just to look at more the um, how this will show up in your body right now. So fight might be, fight and flight might be feeling activated, agitated, like there's energy in your body that wants to move. Yeah. And the parasympathetic nervous system, on the other hand, is more like where you feel you're in a collapse. You, you just feel fatigued, you've, you've no energy, you just feel like anything can feel like a struggle. Really, any kind of movement can feel like a real struggle. It's that shutdown, it's that curling in, it's that collapse. And this all, this all stems from our ancient evolutionary past. We share the same nervous system as the animal kingdom. So when an animal feels under threat, it has the options to either fight. So say it's a, there's a tiger that's coming in to attack a mammal. The mammal can turn around and decide it wants to fight the tiger. Yeah. Or it may be like, forget that, I'm out of here and it will run. Yeah, it will run. Or maybe it realizes it doesn't have any of those options and so it'll play dead, it'll curl into a little ball and play dead. Yeah. And then hopefully if it survives, it gets up, shakes the energy off and then it goes about its business. So nature has a way to help us with survival threats and to discharge any of the energy that can be there after, but in our modern society, we've kind of lost this, this natural ability of how to regain balance after we've been either hyper arousal or hypo, okay? Sympathetic, fight, flight, parasympathetic, freeze, play dead, okay? So what I'd love to share with you now is a short practice and how to begin to bring balance to the nervous system through some embodiment somatic practice. I want to acknowledge first of all that the thought of coming into your body might be really hard for you right now, especially if your body is where you carry pain and distress. just really want to Acknowledge that. That might not be an easy thing. So hope that I can offer you some choices if it's feeling too uncomfortable to be in your body right now, that you can focus on something through your eyes, through your hearing, that's not in your body, but still is through the senses. Yeah. When you feel ready, we will begin. So if you can, coming to lying down on the ground, make a comfortable nest for yourself, cushions, blankets if you need them. Or if you want, you can also do this from seated, if lying down is not going to be comfortable for you. Take a moment or two to find the optimal place for your body right now. 
When you feel ready, just take the hands behind the head. Feel yourself beginning to rest the head back into the hands, whether you're seated or lying down. And just let the eyes drift over to the right. And let's just pause here for a moment. So this is the first step in rebalancing the nervous system. Just let the eyes stay over to the right for maybe another 10, 20 seconds. And just waiting until naturally a yawn or an opening of the mouth to release through your jaw begins to happen. Ah, doesn't have to be a full yawn, just whatever comes with that invitation. And then notice the jaw begin to soften maybe a little bit more. Just letting the breath be natural now. Maybe you find a little movement needs to come into the jaw, into the throat a little more. And then let's return the eyes to centre and then over to the other side. So eyes travel out to the left now. So this is an exercise to help balance part of your nervous system, the dorsal vagus nerve. So again, eyes are drifting to the left. And just inviting that there be a yawn or a stretch through the mouth. Ah. Hmm, notice how that's beginning to feel. So again, if you're finding that there's a lot of discomfort in the body right now, keep the attention through the eyes focused on something that feels pleasant to look at in the environment around you. And then slowly returning the head to centre just releasing the arms down by your side. And let's take the hands onto the belly. So just resting the hands now onto your stomach. And as you lie or sit back in your chair, I invite you to feel what is supporting you right now. Is it the chair? Is it the ground beneath? Bringing your attention to what you're in contact with, what's holding and supporting you right now. Again, if at any time this is too much to stay so attentive to the body, just let your eyes connect with something around you that looks pleasant. Otherwise, 
Feel yourself begin to become heavier. To release your weight into the supports around or beneath. Just like you can soften even a little bit. Begin to feel the breath rising to meet your hands and falling again as you breathe out. Following this rise and fall of the belly. Just like a big balloon that's filling and emptying again. Notice if your breath naturally begins to deepen as you do this. This really brings us into parasympathetic rest and digest. Notice how this feels to you. If at any time it's uncomfortable, not feeling right, please do what you need to do. Move. Take your eyesight to look at something in the room, whatever you need. But if this feels soothing, calming, I invite you to stay with. Following the breath, like a wave that's rippling through you, filling the belly, filling the chest, and then emptying and releasing again. I even like to try a few sign breaths, breathing in through the nose. And out through the mouth. And through the nose. And out through the mouth. And I invite you to slide a hand up to your heart. So we have a hand on belly, a hand on the heart. Letting the body relax again, let the arms relax. Hands relax. Feel where you're supported once again. And let yourself feel the contact of the hand as a gesture of self-compassion now. Of tenderness, of care. And just breathing into that for the next 10, 20 seconds. Being with breath. Being with supports beneath, around you. Inviting a compassionate presence to whatever you are noticing. Ah. And then see 
how you'd like to bring this to completion for yourself. I'm noticing I'm enjoying a little movement of hand over the heart. Maybe even hand on the belly, giving a little rub. Whatever, whatever feels comforting right now. Ah, and then see how you'd like to transition. Maybe a little movement, maybe a little stretch. And then when you feel ready, coming back to see that with the eyes open or taking what you need right now. So thank you so much for your attention and sending you my very best wishes from here.